Let's talk about the Asian space race to the moon. It involves China, Japan, India, and Russia. In this video, we're going to talk about Russia. Listen. What do you think that is? That sound was broadcasted by the Soviet satellite Sputnik in 1957. Sputnik traveled at a speed of 18,000 miles per hour, completing an orbit every 96 minutes, and it did it over 1,400 times until burning up in Earth's atmosphere. The broadcast was heard around the world and made Americans say, oh, sh for Russia can be expected to increase. And there may be another consequence. Russia has in recent months been threatening nations who grant bases to America. Those threats have not been taken very seriously, but now the world knows that it took a far more powerful projectile than America possesses to push that satellite into its orbit in space. In view of that, Russia's threats may be more effective from now on. Probably no one here in the nation's capital would disagree with one thing that Senator Wiley said. We had better get on our toes. Now back. That was the first milestone in the original space race. We all know how that race ended. The Soviet Union never successfully sent astronauts to the moon. They developed the N1L3 rocket to compete with the US Saturn V, but all four attempts to launch the rocket failed. Matter of fact, one of the failed launches created one of the largest non-nuclear explosions ever. But Russia and its space agency Roscosmos has its eyes set back on the moon. Good for them. In 2012, Russia announced they're going to send astronauts to the moon by the year 2030. More recently, on July 14, 2017, Roscosmos announced that they plan on sending astronauts to Mars as well. And check this, they are inviting NASA to join them. How have times changed, huh? Roscosmos plans on taking what they learned from the moon missions and applying it to Mars missions down the road. Do you guys think NASA will work with Roscosmos on a Mars mission? Comment below. Okay, back to the Asian space race. Russia announced the new rocket Angara to be the new workhorse and replace the Suez and Proton rockets. The Angara will carry six astronauts in the spacecraft compared to three with the Soyuz. There are two notable versions of the Angara, the Angara 1.2 and the Angara 5. The Angara 1.2 had a successful test flight on July 9th, 2014, and the Angara 5 had a, had a successful test flight in December of 2014. In October 2015, Russia and the European Space Agency, ESA, announced that they will work together in a joint moon mission and explore the possibility of establishing a moon base. In this plan, Russia will provide the launch vehicle and the ESA will develop the landing system, navigation system, and drilling rig for the lunar missions, um, which is called Luna 27. Luna 27 will land astronauts on the south pole of the Aitken Basin, which is an unexplored area of the moon. The purpose of the mission is to look for resources on the moon, such as water and minerals, oxygen, which is why the space agencies are targeting the basin because it, it's always cold and dark, and, it, and if there is water there, it's been frozen and it didn't burn up. And, uh, and perhaps there's other useful material we just don't know. That's why this is an exciting mission and I, I can't wait to see what they find. Before Luna 27, Russia will conduct the Luna 25 or Luna Glob mission, which is slated to launch in 2019. It involves sending a lander to the south pole of the moon, just like Luna 27. It's more, it's more like a scout mission before they send astronauts there. They're gonna, they're gonna send a, a lander there uh, to do various research, um, including penetrators that Japan's space agency JAXA was supposed to send to the moon, but they never did. So Russia is gonna take those penetrators and send them to the moon, and uh, it's, it's like what it sounds. It's gonna penetrate into the moon's surface and it's going to measure the flow the heat flow in the interior of the moon basically learning more about what's underneath the moon um, not exactly sure what else it can do I, I may research that later 
So the ESA will be contributing the high resolution cameras for the landing spacecraft, along with the device to send soil samples back to the earth. All right, so we have, we have Luna 25 slated for 2019 and the manned uh, space flight mission Luna 27 projected for 2025. Their ultimate goal, again, is establishing a permanent moon base. I just think that is fantastic. So, looking at the big picture, considering India's manned space programs uh, have been delayed until 2024, and Japan announced that they're going to the moon, but they're still looking for partners to help pay for the mission and to help out. So, it looks like Russia, as of right now, is a front runner in this space race, especially with the help of the ESA. So. We're going to find out more um, in part four of the Asian space race. We're going to see what China has in store for their plans. So you want to subscribe so you don't miss that. Uh, I really think Russia has the best chance to make it there before the other countries. But we'll see. China has a lot of money and uh, and money's a huge factor in space exploration. Um, so this is this, again, this is part three of the series. You can watch the other two videos. It's in the description below. The part one is Japan, part two is India. So check those out. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think Russia will um, make it to the moon before the other countries? Comment below. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. It really helps our channel grow. And if you're interested in all things future, then join the Neo Scribe tribe and subscribe. I am the Oracle, and this is the end of our journey.